Greetings. My name is Xin Kai Yuan. My co-workers and I are all from Zhejiang University and University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign Institute of Zhejiang University. It is a huge pleasure for me to represent my co-workers to give a presentation for our work, Active Match, which is an end-to-end -end semi-supervised active representation learning model. So let me start with the introduction of the background of our work. We know that deep neural network usually requires a large amount of labeled data for training. Semi-supervised learning is a machine learning method which tries to train the model with few labeled data, which can significantly alleviate the demand for collecting large amounts of labels. Semi-supervised learning is an important topic to be investigated because the process of data labeling is expensive and time consuming in practice. So it is highly demanded to develop methods to train the model with as few labels as possible so that deep learning can be easily used in a wide range of areas. In our paper, we follow the settings of semi-supervised learning methods and propose a novel representation learning method called Active Match, which combines semi-supervised learning, contrastive learning, and active learning into an end-to-end -end learning framework. The main contributions of our work are threefold. First, our model combines semi-supervised learning, contrastive learning, and active learning to address the issue of training a well-performed model with a small amount of labeled data. Second, different from previous methods which combines semi-supervised learning and contrastive learning by first pre-training via contrastive learning and then fine-tuning by semi-supervised learning. Our model uses an end-to-end -end training scheme, which simplifies the training process. Finally, the representations learned by active match outperforms previous semi-supervised learning methods in the image classification task on many standard benchmarks, such as CIFA-10, CIFA-100, and SVHN, when there are very few labels available for training. This figures shows the overall framework of our model. As you can see in the figure, both the large unlabeled dataset U and the small labeled dataset L employ contrastive learning and semi-supervised learning during the training. The details of those parts will be discussed later. Well, it is worth mentioning here that active learning plays a role to connect these two parts together. Active learning periodically selects the most representative samples from the unlabeled set for labeling according to the uncertainty of the samples, where the uncertainty is indicated by the output logic of the certain sample. Then, the newly labeled samples are put into the labeled set L and get involved in the training process of labeled images since then. Now, I'd like to elaborate on the unsupervised contrastive learning for unlabeled samples. But before doing that, I will first give a brief explanation on the loss function for the general contrastive learning. For each sample x, it has its positive samples x plus and its negative samples 
x minus. Contrastive learning aims to minimize the representation distances between x and its positive samples and maximize the representation distances between x and its negative samples. In the loss function above, Rx is the representation of x output from the network, and sim is the similarity function, which measures the representation distances. As you can see, when the loss decreases, the numerator, which contains the representation distances between x and its positive samples, is supposed to decrease. And the denominator, which contains the representation distances between x and its positive samples, is supposed to increase. Now, take a look at figure two. For the contrastive learning, of the unlabeled sample, we obtain two different augmentations of a certain image Xi, and they are considered as positive pairs. Namely, they are the only positive sample of each other, and all other image augmentations are considered as negative samples, thus yielding this loss function below. This contrastive learning loss is only active in the warm-up stage, since the assumption that all other augmentations are negative pairs here is too general and conservative. So it is better not to use it in the whole training process. For the semi-supervised learning part for unlabeled data, each image Xi is augmented by a strong and a weak augmentation, respectively. For example, a weak augmentation may be a horizontal flip, and a strong augmentation can be some cutouts and color distortions. Each augmentation goes through the network backbone and the classification had to generate the corresponding logit Q. QIW here is the logit of the weakly augmented image, which is basically the probability of Xi being a sample of each class. We then use the logit QIW to get a pseudo label for that image if the maximum left value of the logit is greater than a predefined threshold C. If we get such pseudo label, then we use it to compute the cross entropy loss for the strongly augmented image. Otherwise, we don't think that we have a valid pseudo label. So we just ignore such sample when computing the loss. In this loss function, this capital one is a function returning one if the condition inside is true and zero otherwise. H represents the cross entropy loss function. Now we move the supervised part where the things become easier with the help of labels. For contrastive learning, we obtain two augmentations for each input xj, and we let the set sj denote all augment samples having on the same class as xj. Then, for the first augmentation of xj, anything except itself will be considered as its positive samples, where anything else will be considered as negative samples, which corresponds to the first term in the supervised contrastive learning loss function. For the second augmentation of xj, similarly, anything except itself will be considered 
as its positive samples, and others are negative samples, which leads to the second term in the loss function. In addition to the supervised contrastive learning loss, a cross entropy loss is also included in this part for each labeled input pair, xj, yj. This page shows the performance of active match in the image classification task. For table one, we used our model to learn representations for images and then do the image classification task on standard semi-supervised learning benchmarks, such as CIFA-10, CIFA-100, and SVHN, with different number of total labeled training samples. We compare the results with both fully supervised learning, mixed match, and fixed match, which are two previous state-of-the-art semi-supervised learning methods. And the results indicate the good performance of our model. The second table show the results of the ablation study, which indicates how the active learning and supervised contrastive loss contribute to the overall performance of active match. Well, the figure on the right bottom gives a visualization of the representations learned by our model and the previous fixed match model after training with 2000 labels. They both visualize the representation clusters of the first 10 classes of CIFA 100. The figure shows that the representations learned by our model visually have a better cluster compared with fixed match. In conclusion, in this paper, we propose active match, which is an end-to-end -end semi-supervised learning method, combining semi-supervised learning, contrastive learning, and active learning for learning image representations. Active match leverages a relatively small labeled dataset and a large unlabeled dataset for training to achieve good performance on the image classification task. Ex experiments shows that active match achieves the state of the art on semi-supervised learning benchmarks, such as CIFA-10, CIFA-100, and SVHN, and also indicates how active learning can help to improve the performance of semi-supervised learning. We believe that it is worth further investigations on how advanced active learning algorithms can pro provide more benefits to semi-supervised learning. That's all of the presentation. Thank you for your listening.